Hi there. My little dog is laying on the couch snoring, so I hope his uh, sound effects won't be bothersome. Um, well, it's that day. It's 11 11 of 2011, and uh, I didn't write a journal today, but uh, I did go through and find a number that I had not yet recorded. So this one is from 11 2. It was the first of that day. The Mayan day was Five Serpent. And it's called Opening Inner Sight. What is the new world like? I do find that the intensity of change is ongoing. How about you? Are you noticing it there in your own life? Or is the process of day to day still blinding you to what is all around you? It is an amazing thing to discover this other reality as she loses her place. The one that exists outside of the control structure of mind dominance. The shock comes to realize that this has been here all along. Now could that be? Mind must be a powerful thing indeed to be able to veil from us such magnificence as this. It is so strange too to find out how the oneness and the individual in it can work, can be side by side, even though mind would think either would cancel the other out. Wait, there seems to be a consonance of some kind between those, these last two paragraphs. Maybe there is. What do I find in that? I find balance, sacred balance, to be the critical key. Without it, one sways too far to one side of the equation. One polarizes. And when polarized, one quite loses sight of the other arm of the pair. One becomes as a one-armed man, functional, but not so useful as having two arms can be. Then, too, the funny and rather pathetic part is that one arm is used to beat on the other one, to try to punch it out, to prove that this arm is the right one. What a terrible concept, this thing of right and wrong. Good, better, and best is far more accurate. Nothing in God's kingdom is wrong, nor could be. That's a poor way of thinking that, unfortunately, we've all been taught. It's not hard to look around the world and see what chaos and domination erupts founded on this idea of rightness and wrongness. Good, better, and best. That's the way of it, the way that I see things. It's all beautiful. Even the testings, the trial that brings pain, they're all good. It's all in how we look at it. And to that extent, we're creators in our own world. Unfortunately, again, we've let someone else give us the script. They both write and direct the play of it as we sheeple along. Well, of course, that was the way of it. As long as we could be kept unaware, kept trapped in the mind, which they largely controlled, we could be handled, be managed like any herd of livestock could. But of course, not anymore. Well, that's dependent on each one's choice, of course. No one and nothing is going to come along and hand you the perfect world. It's time to quit waiting altogether. No matter what we are waiting for, let us stop it. Waiting itself is a false paradigm. 
it can be easily seen as a way to waste the present moment, to direct attention out off into some proverbial future. Such a thing doesn't exist anywhere except as a concept in the mind. Are you ready to take control of your life back from your mind? Are you up to the challenge? This control runs very deep. There are control mechanisms planted in almost every part of our consciousness, everywhere but the soul, the spirit. So really to gain our independence from that, it is best to become partners, to become one with the soul. As you set your intention to do this, to make friends with the practice of watch and observe, you'll be doing a lot of it. That's how you spot the control mechanisms at work. You cannot do it from mind. It reminds me of Einstein saying that to solve a particular problem, you don't remain on the same level with it. Indeed, please know that as you do this, it's not the end of the line. We are still children at this, and so much waits ahead, waits for our mastery to develop. This must go first, unless and until we can escape entirely the mind's dominance and control of us, of our waking state, which is really a sort of sleeping one. No other steps forward can be taken. They all rest on this. Now, whether you use the concept of dropping down into heart, becoming one with the moment, or something else entirely, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't. The point is to find your way out of your own mind control that everyone has going on there within. How you do this is your business. I'm sure there are many fine ways that work. You see, we still have the subject and object in operation with all of this. And those are ultimately not even real. But we don't skip from second grade to tenth. There is a sort of linear progression we're making. At least it can be looked at this way. Don't worry about the ways that you are looking at things now. Trust that they will change. What we find wonderful and workable today may be thrown out with next week or next month's trash. Or at the rate we're going these days, maybe even tomorrow's. No one knows. Just don't be attached to your methods, your practice, your ideas and concepts. Let's hold them all lightly ready to drop them when the right time appears. You'll know when. Less worry, okay? I am truly betwixt and between right now. I see the sense in the way I've been doing things, understanding things, yet I also see how just ahead all of that vanishes. It's very strange. I don't yet know from deep inside of it how this oneness works, how individuality works from within it, or even if it does, but that is fine. Can you live with some cognitive dissonance? If not, you don't have the stomach for this trip. Best stay home. So, I won't try to reach ahead into what I can see there to share that with you. I'll be true to the now. Within the now is always contained all that's needed. Sometimes into it even comes somewhat of past or future. That's appropriate at that time. So we can always fully trust now. Actually, on this ride, we aren't going forward unless we're firmly feet planted in now. That's the way of it. That's how you turn the key in the engine to take off. 
The whole thing of time is most strange. The various ET beings from different races all report that our concepts around time are all but useless. They are not functional. They don't describe reality well at all. So let's hold everything around time most lightly of all. If your sense of time starts morphing on you, be not afraid. Instead, rejoice. I'm thinking almost anything would be better than the concepts we now hold around it. For now, what seems strongest to me is that time-space is a fabric, is one thing. As I've said before, an excellent case is made for this by Friedhoff Capra in the Tao of Physics. Within the very first few chapters, he will take you on one of these trips I'm fond of going on into time-space. You will see how the very structure of our language is entirely wrong. It violates reality. How could it be anything else when it is based on wrong concepts, such as those around time? Go to Capra for the full explanation of this. He calls it the fourth dimension, as I recall. The book is around. It's been out quite a while. Now, that's for those of you with sufficient curiosity remaining to be reading books. I've mostly lost that though there are times when a particular book or book reaches out to me and so I read it. Remember, don't set any hard and fast rules for yourself. How can you be flexible within that? Sure, a basic structure must exist. You must eat and sleep and feed yourself and such things. Just don't hem yourself in too much beyond the basics, okay? I am finding a new point in the body begins kind of speaking to me. The high heart has come into prominence in a number of recent experiences. I haven't read anything except the stray comment on this point, which I gather is right around the thymus area of the upper chest. I think I've also heard it called the booty or Bodhi point or something like that. Again, I don't know. Many of you will know far more than I do on this, and so many things. Anyway, I may play with it a wee bit to see if centering there makes a difference and so on. There is something else that is opened up that I also know nothing about. It seems that there is this large area above the head in a roughly teardrop shape only with a more blunted point coming down into or over the head. Now this area is quite large, I'm guessing 15 by 12 feet or so, and full of consciousness, of awareness. I found or saw or experienced it as I was coming back to the body from sleep. I found self-awareness contained in that as I returned. I don't know much more about it than that yet. I just stopped to observe as I was returning, rather amazed at what I saw, what I experienced. This doesn't seem congruent with any kind of a chakra thing. I know there are those who postulate further chakras above the body. Now these chakras are just uh, energy centers, vortexes, like a whirlpool in water and they're in our energy body. So some believe that there are a number of chakras that are above the body, and I find that plausible. This I find is something quite different though. It was a form that had uniform placement of consciousness throughout it. There was no central focus, no movement or spinning at all, and it was not like the vortex a chakra would make the teardrop shape was odd too. Now, of course, it is possible that one would have an inactive chakra, so it would not be spinning. This could be. As I say, though, I just feel this is different. 
If any of you have any experience of finding your consciousness in such a form above the head of your body, do let me know. I have to say this was not the whole of my consciousness, clearly, for I was cognizant of standing or hovering upright near the body as it lay there, still mostly asleep. There was enough of the eye sense to stand there watching for some moments. Was consciousness also within the body in addition to being in this teardrop bubble above? I don't know. I was too surprised at what I was perceiving. My whole focus was entirely wrapped up in perceiving and experiencing self in this bubble, so I can't say. Now, by sharing these things, I don't mean to put so much importance on them. Not any, actually. These are just things I've noticed that I'm sharing with you. I don't find any particular virtue in them. They're just interesting. And there, I revealed it. I too have a mind, one that is still curious to some extent. There is some of what is strange is different that I'm noting since the end of the Mayan calendar, the 28th of last month, Whereas before, I found myself less and less interested and involved in various things of manifestation, the details of life, now I find myself getting back into them. It's a bit disconcerting, and if I had a path or a plan all laid out in my head about what is the uh, right way to proceed, then I might fight with myself over this. Instead, I just watch and observe it. All will reveal itself to us if we will only be faithful to this. Don't try to control things, nor let yourself be controlled. Instead, find the point of balance within, and from there, you guessed it, just watch and observe. Be willing to flow where you are led. Don't fight it. You'll know when to change streams, to change direction, to stop this or that. You'll just know. We have this phenomenal peace just waiting for us all the time. It's always there. We can choose to participate only in peace. This won't manifest fully in your every moment. There is nothing so constant as that in this realm well, except for change. But that doesn't matter. Underlying all this is peace, and you can connect with it if you so choose. Be determined. Watch some Muji videos. That will help reconnect anyone who is ready for that. And replace Muji's name with whomever you're called or drawn to. Just be alert to trusting that one too much. Always let us be somewhat reserved, preferring to give reverence only within. To source and to higher self, to God if you wish, it can always be found there inside. The contact point, trust that only, nothing outside. We'll all have a jolly good laugh one day fairly soon as we look back on this lifetime on this life and on how we once believed in the solid reality of this world. It is not that. It is not anything mine can describe or imagine either. As we enter the kingdom of heart, we gain new powers of sight. We look out the same eyes on the same world and find exactly nothing the same. It must be experienced, my friends. I can't show you a movie of this. And if I could, what good would that do? Your world would be different than mine. You know, and that's the end of the journal. That's really interesting. I found this really relevant to this day. Uh, you know, the serendipity of picking this one to read at this time on this 11 11 day where so many have been expecting so much. How's it been for you? I have practically slept this day away. 
that just is what I felt like doing, and so I did it. I hope you had some reasonable freedom to go with your intuition, too. We'll discuss it later in the comments, I'm sure. Good day.